Okay, it's time for this week a little Petra Classic Vlog. I'm outside this time, and it's got a little table thing, so we're all set. Okay, we only have two o'clock of feeling left. Can you believe that? Yeah, I'm not doing this after the gonna go over. The show's gonna be over, hopefully, no point. Maybe I'll do a cover from a P, maybe I won't. We'll see. So, okay, I'm going on making a break soon, so I, I have to do some kind of vlog in the time. Um, I started watching a show I wanted to do vlog for, but I was like, nah, maybe some, maybe not, I don't know. Anyway, that's it for this week's episode, Back Window, written by SMD Marco, being a second episode, I believe. And, uh, Victory, I'm gonna convince him that he's gonna be a fair writer of mine, but I'm getting ahead of myself. Anyway, so on this episode, Russell ends up being cooped up in this wall thing, and he's in the back window. And he think he sees what he thinks of Josh Sharp stealing Blight the Kind, and he has to kill him get one day telling the truth. And Blight thing having a bit of creator block. So, the first, okay, the first big double thing I've got code is the Hitchcock reference. And I was not expecting that. I should have figured from the title, which is not quite blame when Jackie had that code called Pain in the Rear Window, which is still even better. But the cap code starts with the flyer thing, like, going through wind, in the wind, and going through the skinny, it's it POV, and we, and it's very cinematic, and the goblet can be really, really interesting, but really cinematic, like, I feel cinematic looking apart from the Calcut, actually. So you can tell put a little more effort to this one, and from getting a bunch of Harry Potter references again there, we can get Bird for Bird reference, we get Geico, we get, uh, North by Northwest, I believe, yeah, a couple references. Actually, and then later on, the cookie had Russell Ferguson for him, which is when the act when it go full on talk about with his black and white things and explaining his, his tale crime in the heat. You know, it's it's great. I fat I love the age where everything in the it's so cool and they're so funny. It's like that open and it's really cinematic, so it keeps you that sort of same feeling. Kind of sort of more reference to minor reference. Out. I don't know, I just feel like that uh, both two teams were really cool, but I don't know, battles like if someone to go and fall here compared to Awood, it's just gone all out, they're kinda of two teams. And that fire should just come back at the end. It's kinda of point I mean the fire ended up being sort of to a full face plant thing. And, oh yeah, that kinda of plot to the cup of going, which painting was to go on discount wipeout and that's what like, get rough more hurt to begin with. And the bow actually lead me to her I got a few problems I do kind of have with one. First of all, I think Pain Wing kind of out of character. She wants to be in a really dangerous pet game show, and she doesn't get care about that, like, getting her all over the place. She's just, like, well, she, she really can sort of winning the thing, and I don't think actually Pain Wing. I mean, she's she weird occasionally, but she never like this. I, mean, I don't think any pet would like this, but go we can occasionally get this. Pepper, maybe, well, to Pepper probably one more likely to be in the kind of thing when going. Mean, you know, cause I think, I think, I think, think paling of the line, nothing getting in the way of the, you know, even Colin Kent. <laughs> but I think I a lot of good lines in the world. But anyway, enough, again, paling is horrible, but you can tell what she's playing about and just done to get it into Rock Hoping Her. After that, it does have much of an impact story until the end, where at least she got punished for being reckless by everyone getting hurt in the end. It being all forced to watch the Dutch of Lancashire Lane. Oh, speaking of reference, remember how I said in with What Did You Get? I wondered if that rat came back. We did. He made a cameo in the cup of code. I believe Peter and everyone as well. Go out with a cameo. Another reference is when Nick Cage uh, shagged words for the picket before, which I believe is Fish Fountain of Water. Um, uh, we'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> the fun there, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna get into. Anyway. Um, but, yeah, um, and the other, like, again, painting just off, I mean, I don't know, not bad enough to really appear, but definitely a problem, and also maybe, like, work on whining early on, get a little annoying, like, before he would get into the actual story, he had to, like, he had, he, they, he had this thing, to, he basically made him, like, do a bunch of bidding while he hurt, which, like, don't go that they don't, want to go to him when he wants to tell the story, or a boycott kind of thing. They could have, like, turned that, I don't know, but 
Eh, it doesn't matter because one okay, cause the middle part didn't drag a little bit, but the, the rest of it too good for me to really be bothered by it because Ross gets some good line and now, you know, he's trying to give it some Josh doing the bad thing. The opening is for the act like a pretty good joke and good atmosphere. That's a great part where uh, Blythe from Josh comes in after she talked to Russell. Josh speaks up and she goes, Oh, she think of Russell. <laughs> Get it? They're both voiced by Samuel Vincent. <laughs> Which actually kind of clever that way he kind of did that. Um, I can't even more interesting how we end up. Yeah. Yeah. Next up. Uh, Lot good life proof out. And then of course the third act of when the story all comes together and it get and, and also I think Rock get really good what Ruffle for him bring in to go. I like how he duck it again, but it's go through fast forward. That's great. Yeah, the hitch cover is a bit better. So I don't think I'm quite good about them. They're fun. I did not expect to see that in Lil Fetch up, especially when it began. Yeah, some cool um but the big, other big thing I like about the one, because I all cool references, it's actually Josh Sharp. Now, I talked about him a bit in Blight Crush, and the fun I hear is gonna be coming up for that, and then the Barry River Williams one can be for another episode, but it ended up being his birthday, so I had to do that for that, for that one, and the fun I would do that one is for this. Now, I brought him up there, but I can't remember if I could pair him the Flash Gantry, but I guess it's now time to do that. And a fan of free moving and a couple cameos, you know, there. I was like, he didn't. For most of them, actually, probably not first movie, even though we got none. Kakabu, he turned into a king of the guy, and again, the third movie, yes, we were really sorry for him because he did a dozen of things. But then he came with Derpy there. Then he had Josh Rock appeared, who about had the same amount of personality, but. I, but of course, had like Angle was trying to find him. And then he appeared again in Helicopter Dan. I don't think he appeared again until Fish Out of Water. I might be wrong on that. I don't remember him bringing him to in any large capacity, anyway. You know. So, that episode kind of began delving a little further. Then he has the episode where he, he actually helped out Blythe with her little creator block by telling her what his experience is, that kind of thing. And that very took you a little bit more about the character, you know, good time. And he ended up using that to help her, you know, through. And that kind of gave the character a little more weight when he can buy any problem using his own problem to outfit her. That's a lot more interesting than what he was doing before, but he was just kind of there. He was okay. Like Flash Country, I had nothing really get. I didn't never get the evil character. But not annoying. I like my dog right there. <laughs> Good time. And Josh Sharp doesn't appear a ton to begin with. I don't mind it. Yeah. Yeah. He's nice. What's wrong with that? But the kind of maybe start to actually. Before I have like neutral to him, the kind of with the game, maybe start to like him. And then it dawned on me that now he had kind of more development than Flash Country. A character in my little bone. There you go. Well, it's not much, but it's more. It's a step in the right direction. And thankfully, with the four, we can be going further. We had Game of Thrones, and he's starting to appear a little more. Which I like. He didn't appear that much for a character to be a love and dread. I guess they figured, well, we need to focus on the blight pet stuff before we get into a lot of romance and stuff. And thankfully, they have tried to pull them together. They just hang out. And I think, in fact, I believe only a couple of them really focus really hard on like relationship for the gay. And I like that. Now, even that about romance is not in it. <laughs> Look at your two pet go. Go bad. They got with two great things, and the rest of it is good. You know, it, you know, I don't really care. It got food really entertaining. It got, got, got a little energy to it in a lot of places. It got, it's never boring. It dragged, but it's not boring, necessarily. But like his car running got really entertaining, really funny. That opening scene and also get the scene got really well done, really cinematic, too. Really like animation and music there, and you know the main plot is an interesting one, and it got a really good conclusion, which gives development a lot sharp and gives us a nice little moral. I don't think I'll find every one, but it's a nice invite, I suppose. You know, you know, yeah, yeah. I could have, have like a nice feeling at the end. It, and it's the music, and yes, Kaling is kind of out of character, but there's some good joke for that. Yeah, for slightly annoying in the middle part, but again. Get to a good plot, so oh, I don't really care. 
I really like this one. It's not like my, my favorite thing now, but again, a few problems do kind of take away from that. But I really like the Hitchcock reference because again, he can draw strong good for development. So, and the fact that he's now technically better of a character, better, a, a better character in Flash Country kind of kind of can't happen. Not that Flash Country had a ton, it had a ton of screen time, you know. They, you know. I kind of get it with Slash Country, why they don't, you know, it's like, they, I don't know, but either way, but Slash Country TV show, he can movie, kind of, whatever, either way, very, very good episode, so, as for next time, well, I figured, I'm gonna do something special for the last two vlogs, so, I'll tell you what, next week, I'll tell you the last one about, after next week, I kind of have Anthony pick one, and he told me, and, I wish you were here to prove it, but would I lie to you? No. And just go ahead and to pick one. And uh, hope maybe he'll be around next week for me to prove to you. I don't know. But trust me, I'm not lying. But anyway, the one he picked was the Neo Kick Day. Yay! Like, another gets a really good one. Yay. But I'll also have a little bit of your serious element here and there. And it. Right in that type of code. Go. Woohoo! That should be. That should be good. I ever wanted to do that one. Go. And, uh. Two pack of VR left. And both of them are planned. So. Goodbye, random.org. Um. Go. I'll see you next week. And we, uh, you know. You know, like, flip it up. I suppose. Go. Goodbye.